We'll just entertain the people. <laughs> I feel like I have a very low entertainment factor when I'm speaking. <laughs> Hi, I'm Dr. Kendall Samuelson. I'm an associate professor at West Texas A&M University. And today I'm going to talk to you about formulating diets using the Pearson Square Method. The Pearson Square is a really nice and simple way to approach diet formulation. Rarely when we feed livestock, do we meet the requirement with just one feed alone. So oftentimes we have to combine multiple feedstuffs together to be able to satisfy their nutrient requirements and really get them to where we need them to go, whether that's on performance or reproduction or whatever we're trying to really feed those animals for. And so oftentimes we have to combine ingredients. If we don't want to make a very complicated diet, we can kind of take a more simple approach where we're just combining a few things together. And that's where the Pearson Square really comes in handy. What this method does is it allows us to calculate the proportion of feeds using any two ingredients. That's one of the rules about the Pearson Square is you can only use two ingredients to be able to come up with your formulation. The other thing that's a little bit particular about the Pearson Square is you can only use the Pearson Square to formulate for one nutrient at a time. And so if we're trying to use two ingredients and solve for something like crude protein, this particular uh, formulation method works very, very well for us to be able to put a diet together. To understand how to formulate a diet, there's always some basic steps that we should use or things that we need to know before we can actually proceed to starting to solve. The first is what is the animal's nutrient requirement? So you can find this animal's nutrient requirement in a number of different places. Maybe you have an old textbook in your closet somewhere from some animal science class that you took a long time ago or that you're currently taking that you can look up that animal's nutrient requirement in. If you don't have that, you can go and find a number of different resources to be able to find the animal's nutrient requirements. That could be through research publications, it could be through extension publications. Um, something that a lot of us also use on the nutrition side is National Research Council publications. Um, so there's a number of different places that you can go to find information on meeting this animal's nutrient requirement or what the nutrient requirement is. Step two, or the next part of the process, is to determine the nutrient concentration needed um, or coming from your different feed ingredients. So there's a couple different routes that you could take there to be able to determine what type of nutrients you're working with in your feeds. The first and of course most accurate way is to be able to feed sample um, your ingredients, take a sample of those ingredients, send them off to a laboratory and actually get them analyzed. This is kind of the gold standard because you actually know what that specific feed is that you're working with instead of just taking kind of an estimated value out of a book or off the internet um, that may or may not be what you're actually working with. So if you have the time and the resources to do so, we always recommend feed sampling. However, if you're unable to do that, you can find a number of resources. Um, you can use, again, a textbook, you can use uh, NRC publications, or you can also use extension reports, um, research reports. There's also a number of really good feed resources online or feed libraries online that you can use to access ingredients. Um, the Noble Foundation has a great one. Dairy One has a great one. Um, if you're working with pastures, you can contact your local NRCS office if you have one. So there's a number of different places that you can find that information. So basically what we're doing is we're gathering the information to kind of put the pieces together in this puzzle. So we need the animal's nutrient requirements. We need the nutrient content of our feed and then we can go through and actually solve or balance the diet to meet those animals nutrient requirements with the feeds we have available and then once we've gone through and balanced the last thing that we want to do of course always every time is check our answer to make sure that the math is correct and we can uh, fix or catch any mistakes that we may have found so once you've gathered all the information you need then you can put together 
everything and work towards solving the Pearson square and formulating your diet. So the first step of any Pearson square, very straightforward, is to just draw a square on your page and get everything kind of lined out. When you put that square on your page, that middle square is where the nutrient requirement of the animal is going to go. So that's kind of the first step is to add in the nutrient requirements. Then on either side of the square, both above and kind of um, at the top and the bottom of the square, you're going to list the nutrient concentrations of the two feeds that you're working with. So the top is going to be your feed one, the bottom is going to be your feed two, and whatever nutrient you're working with you're going to place it there then once you have everything kind of in place you're going to do the math across so with the Pearson square essentially you subtract diagonally across that Pearson square and put the resulting number on either side what's a little bit particular about the Pearson square with this math is there's a couple of rules associated with it so kind of rule one is that whatever your nutrient requirement is in the middle of your square the two feeds that you're using on the side or to be able to solve that diet have to be on either side of that nutrient requirement and so what that means is that I have to be able to put those feeds together to be able to meet the nutrient requirement in the middle. So I need one feed that has a higher nutrient concentration and I need one feed that potentially has a lower nutrient concentration than what my requirement is to be able to meet that requirement in the middle. So that's kind of rule number one. Rule number two is that in a Pearson square, there are no negative numbers. So whenever I go in and do that diagonal subtraction, if I end up with a negative number, which I will if I'm using a feed that has a lower nutrient concentration than my requirement, then I'm going to turn that number into a positive number. So there is no negative numbers that exist. Um, the other rule is that when I subtract diagonally, that the feed stuff that I'm using does not move diagonally with that feed um, or with that math. So if I start with corn as my ingredient one on the top, even though I subtract that diagonally across, the number down here doesn't become corn. The corn value is still always gonna be that top number. So sometimes that gets a little bit confusing when we're kind of moving numbers and doing math around, but that part always stays the same. Um, and so once I have my ingredients on the side, again, I'm gonna subtract diagonally, which is essentially gonna give me a parts value. Um, and you can see that parts value there on the right hand side. And that should be again, a whole positive number. What I'm doing in the Pearson square is I'm building a diet that includes a percentage. So I'm going to put together a percent. And so the parts is gonna be basically the portion of each ingredient that I'm going to use. I'm then going to add those parts up at the bottom to make a total parts. Once I have my total parts, I take the parts of each feed. So I'm going to take feed one parts and feed two parts, and I'm going to divide them by the total parts. Essentially here, what I'm doing is making a fraction, right? And anytime I put a fraction together, I always think about it as the part divided by the whole, right? I'm determining what proportion of the total is the number I'm looking for. So for example, if I'm looking at the proportion of feed one, I'm gonna take the parts of feed one that I got from my diagonal subtraction divided by the total parts, which was the sum of the parts from both feed one and feed two, and that is going to give me the percentage of that ingredient that I'm gonna use in the diet. And so again, parts divided by total parts, and then I'm gonna multiply that by 100 to give me the percentage in the diet of that ingredient that I'm going to use. The last step we have is to check your answer. And this seems like an extra step maybe we don't need, but checking your answer is really important because I can't tell you how many times that I've done math and the number comes out a little bit weird. Um, and maybe I missed a decimal or something, right? And so I was able to catch that mistake before I actually got to the phase of putting the diet together. And that's what you wanna do. That's why that check step is important. Um, so we want to check and basically the way we do that is we take the proportions that we just calculated and we are going to multiply them by the nutrient content in that diet um, or in that ingredient and that is going to give us the nutrient contribution of that ingredient 
And when we add those all up, that should equal to what the requirement is if you've done the Pearson square correctly. So let's go through an example together. So let's say we're trying to solve a diet for some pigs and we're formulating a diet. In this particular example, I have the, the weight in kilograms, which we would never do in real life, right? But um, that is a lot of how we do the nutrient requirements in these nutrition textbooks and how we kind of look them up. So you may, depending on which resource you are using, have to be able able to convert that weight into kilograms to be able to find the nutrient requirement or sometimes you can just find it based on the pounds. Okay now we're going to go through an example together formulating a diet for pigs. So let's assume we have a pig with a nutrient requirement for crude protein of 17.22% then to provide this nutrient requirement to the animal we have two feed ingredients remember the pearson square we can solve for two ingredients one nutrient concentration so in this case we're solving for crude protein and we're doing that with corn and soybean meal the corn has 9.55 percent crude protein and the soybean meal has 49.44 percent crude protein so we're going to take all three of those numbers and put them into our pearson square So in the middle of the Pearson square is going to go the animal's nutrient requirement. So that 17.22% crude protein goes right there in the middle as what we need to provide that animal to get him or her the crude protein that they need. On the left side of the Pearson square are going to go the ingredients. So at the top, we have our feed one, which in this case, I'm going to use corn at 9.55% crude protein. And, and on the bottom of our Pearson square on the left-hand side is going to go our soybean meal, which is 49.44% crude protein. The next step that we have is to subtract across our Pearson square. So essentially we take that 49.44 number minus the 17.22 in the middle, and that gives us that value for corn on the right-hand side. Kind of odd because we're subtracting the soybean meal number, but remember it doesn't, the feed ingredient does not move with the math. So that is gonna be the number for corn. On the other feed ingredient, we're going to subtract that 9.55 from 17.22. Now, normally that would give us a negative number, but remember in the Pearson square, we always make our number a positive. So we're gonna turn that resulting number into a positive, and that is going to be the parts for our soybean meal. So once we have both our parts for corn and soybean meal, we're going to add up our total parts at the bottom, which is 39.89. So essentially now we have all of the numbers that we need to be able to make our new proportion or our new fraction. And then we're going to take the parts of each ingredient, so the parts of corn and the parts of soybean meal, and divide them by this total parts number. Once we divide them by the total parts, we multiply them by 100, and that gives us the percentage of each ingredient that we're going to include, include in the diet. So for corn, we're going to include 80.77% of corn in that diet, and we're going to include 19.23% of soybean meal in that diet to be able to meet the animal's nutrient requirement of 17.22% crude protein. The next thing we need to do now that we've solved is ch check our answer make sure it's actually right and everything's correct. So when we do our check, we need to make sure that we formulated everything correctly. The first step of the check is we're going to put in the proportions that we just saw for previously in the Pearson square. These portions should always add up to 100. If they are not equaling 100, that means that I need to go back and double check and make sure I didn't have some type of error in my math. Um, if they do add up to 100, the next step I need to do is make sure that I'm actually meeting the requirement of the animal. So I'm going to take the proportion in the diet of each ingredient, and I'm going to multiply that by the nutrient content of that ingredient to determine how much of that nutrient that particular feedstuff is actually contributing into that diet. 
I do that by taking the crude protein value and dividing it by 100 first. So I need to convert it to a decimal. So in the case of our example, our corn, instead of multiplying by 9.55, I'm going to multiply by 0 0.0955. And I multiply that by my percent in the diet, and that should give me the nutrient contribution from corn. I also do that for soybean meal, and when I add that together, it should equal my requirement that I had in the middle of my square, 17.22, which you see that it does. So that means I've successfully created a diet and I've met the nutrient requirements for those animals. End. That's it. End of video. <laughs> do, 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 do. No. <laughs>